in my Voyage 2 full performance review video, where's the nitro foam? Well, there's no mistaking about it in this shoe. But does that make the Voyage 3 a better shoe? Let's find out in today's review. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Of course, do the usual, give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below if you have any questions about this shoe. I appreciate you being here today though. Today, I am reviewing the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. And if you see a smile on my face, well, there's a reason for that. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the build, the comfort, the performance, and the value. But first, voiceover Chad, why don't you tell us a little bit about the specs and features of the Voyage 3. Tackle any terrain in the sturdy confines of the Voyage Nitro 3. In this updated version of the model, We've tooled the trail shoe with a full nitro foam midsole for a lighter weight and more responsive ride when you're conquering distances. As for some of the specs and features, you get a breathable engineered mono mesh upper with power tape reinforcements, gusseted tongue with dense padding, secure heel lock due to the lacing cords slash loops, and ankle padding, heel tab, four foot drain ports, although I'm not sure where those are exactly, nitro foam midsole, considered max cushioning, Puma Grip ATR rubber outsole, power adapt lugs measured at four millimeters, weighing in at 275 grams or 9.75 ounces in a men's US size nine, 35 millimeter heel, 27 millimeter toe for an eight millimeter heel to toe drop, and comes in at $140 US MSRP. And there is the sun. Ah, it's a beautiful morning. So I really feel like Puma went back to the drawing board on this one. Kind of started from scratch when they designed this shoe. And that's probably a good thing. I said that the Voyage 2 trail shoe was a good shoe, but not good for trail running. I didn't recommend it. But in the case of the Voyage 3, ooh, we have a whole different and a whole new shoe here. And that is a very good thing. So starting with the build and build quality, I feel like Puma did a great job building this shoe and choosing choices of materials that are gonna last a long time. Uh, but they just, it all came together really well. Some shoes have great individual components, but when it comes together, it just doesn't seem to be all that great. Well, in the case of the Voyage 3, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And its parts are pretty good. That Puma Grip ATR outsole should last a very long time. Good, oh, just a really good choice of an outsole. That nitro foam is finally exactly what we would want. It's comfortable on the road, it's comfortable on single track, it's comfortable on the downhills, it's bouncy, it's just fun. So good quality, should last a very, very long time. And the upper is also built really, really nicely. You have kind of a ripstop engineered mesh with a densely padded, uh, gusseted tongue. The laces are slightly textured so they stay tied, don't come loose. They lay across your foot, nice and even. And then you have these really cool loops that at the top of the laces that when you pull it tight, kind of cinch around your ankle and just hold it, lock it in place. I think that was a good design choice. So the overall quality of the shoe is, again, just really nice. I think it's gonna last a long time. You'll be able to get a few hundred miles out of it. You know, 400, 500 miles out of this shoe, easy. And I don't think it's gonna be a breakdown of the midsole either. I think it's eventually gonna be that the outsole just wears out and it's a good outsole. So I hesitate to give a perfect score. I always try to think, is it really perfect? But overall build quality, 
I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. So moving on to the comfort of the shoe. Generally, when you choose good quality materials, comfort is also gonna be top notch and this shoe makes no exception. It's interesting, I found the Voyage 3 to be comfortable when running on the roads, on gravel roads, single track, technical, rocky, you name it, the shoe stays comfortable. I also found it particularly nice when running downhill. There's enough midsole cushioning and that nitro midsole. Oh, I said it before, but it's money. Spot on. Just feels good. The midsole does just a great job at absorbing your foot impact into the ground. Like I said, especially on the downhill in your heel and all the way through to toe off. But it's also kind of bouncy and responsive. It feels lively. It's a lot of fun. I wouldn't hesitate to take the shoe out on some really long runs. I dare say even some ultras, but it's not just soft. It, like I said, remains lively and fun too. Moving on to the upper, the comfort is also really nice. The laces are distributed across the top of your foot nicely. The gusseted tongue is densely padded and I just mentioned it's gusseted so it stays in place, which only adds to the comfort. It's also interesting, let me show you. The, the tongue is sewn in place at the top and then there's a, an additional liner on both sides here. There's an additional liner that kind of lines the whole inside of the shoe, which I thought was, was kind of interesting. Now, while that adds to the overall uh, comfort, it takes away from the shoe's breathability. I feel like that ripstop engineered mesh is super high quality and durable and um, it's not uncomfortable on the foot. It's, it's actually fairly uh, adaptive, but that extra liner makes it so the shoe's not really all that breathable. In the winter time, you know, it's fall and temperatures are starting to drop. That actually might be kind of nice, help add some insulation to keep the foot warm. But I wonder and I question why Puma did that. Uh, it just doesn't quite make sense. I would say remove that inner liner around the toe box and open it up a little bit more for some breathability. The other thing that I really like, I'm gonna stop and show you again, is these loops, these lace loops here at the top. They, uh, when you pull the, the shoe tight, it pulls the collar around your ankle and really helps secure it. Plus you have some really nice, dense, uh, well padded area around the ankle and the heel. And that just, oh, it just feels good. It really locks your ankle in place. And uh, yeah, it's just super comfortable. I don't know, I, I can't say it enough. The ankle hold in this shoe is among the best that I've experienced. But it's not just that it's secure, it remains comfortable due to the extra padding and the way that they designed that heel collar to wrap around your foot a little bit. Just, it's just nice. It's probably worth mentioning the heel tab that you can use to uh, help pull your shoe on. Thought it was kind of gimmicky at first, but uh, you know what? It works. The reason why I mention it as far as comfort is concerned is because I do feel it touch the Achilles, the back of my Achilles. It's worth noting that that does not uh, become a distraction. It's not uncomfortable at all. It's uh, noticeable when you're really trying to pay attention, but not a big deal that it's there. And uh, you know, again, I thought it was kind of gimmicky. I'm not really one to, to require pull tabs, but <laughs> I've used it every time I put the shoe on. So I guess it's helpful in getting the shoe on. Works really well just to stick your finger in through that, that loop right there and pull the shoe on. So yeah, you feel it on your ankle right here, but uh, again, not a big deal at all. And not problematic in the least. So how would I score the overall comfort? Well, it's not perfect and it's because of the breathability. So I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. That's still really, really good. Again, I would use this shoe on I mean, if this was your only training trail shoe, then you're set. You can use this in long runs, short runs. Because of that bouncy midsole, you can use it 
in your tempo runs. You can use an ultras. Uh, the shoe is lightweight enough that your feet and legs don't get uh, fatigued very easily. So yeah, just comfort overall top notch and really, really like it. But that does bring up an interesting point about performance because I started to get into it a little bit. Let's talk about the performance of the shoe. All right, starting with the outsole. That Puma Grip ATR rubber is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, seriously, among the best grip I've ever experienced in a trail shoe. It truly is amazing, whether it's technical, single track, rocks, roots, smooth rocks, uh, wet conditions. It just, oh, that also just gives you super good confidence that whatever you're, you're putting your foot and your shoe onto in the, on the ground, you're not gonna have to worry about grip. Seriously, grip for days. Puma also did something really interesting with the outsole, and that is where each individual lug is able to move just a little bit independently of the other lugs. It's kind of like having a multi-independent suspension car, but in the case of a shoe, oh, the sun is behind the, uh, the ridge line here. <laughs> We're gonna be making our way up to the top of the ridge line and then cutting through over the top, right over there. So the lugs on the outsole, and it's, if I'm really trying to pay attention, I can feel each lug independently kind of moving just a little bit uh, to grip onto whatever surface I'm running on, rocks and the dirt and the different uh, grooves and cuts in the dirt and the trail. Uh, it just, it's really, really good. Um, I don't know how else I can explain it, but the grip is just simply phenomenal. Those bi-directional lugs uh, really help when going both uphill and downhill and just do a great job. So now you're probably really curious about the, and I'm gonna walk this hill here, really curious about the performance of that midsole, that nitro midsole. It is a super critical nitrogen infused midsole. It's lightweight, it's bouncy, it's cushioned, and it's fun. The midsole and actually the overall shoe itself reminds me if the Puma Forever Run and Fast Track Nitro had a baby, this is the shoe that they would produce. Now, slight tangent, I'm surprised that Puma calls this the Voyage because it's really more of a substantial upgrade over the previous Fast Track. But hey, this is the Voyage shoe that we've always been wanting and I'm grateful for it. It's really a high performing shoe. I also like, and as mentioned previously, in regards to the performance of this shoe, I could see buying this shoe and using it for all of your trail runs, which makes it quite the universal shoe. It's one that's gonna last a long time, so you're not breaking the bank. More on that when I talk about the value. But the outsole combined with that midsole, it's gonna last a long time. It's a fun shoe. You can uh, take it on your tempo runs. You can uh, do hill repeats with it. It's gonna be comfortable on the downhills. I would dare say you even could use it on your ultras. It's, uh, it's that good. The performance of the upper is also quite nice. The fit is true to size. For me, didn't have to size up or down. It is more of a snug fit, which I appreciate. Really gives a good lockdown across the top of your foot and as mentioned in the heel. So nice secure hold. I don't feel unstable on the trails at all. And then I'll also show you, uh, it flares out just a little bit on this lateral side. And then you get a little bit of a flare around both sides of the ankle, which help, help keep your foot stable uh, on the uneven terrain of, the, of a trail. All right, good job, buddy. Enjoy. Your YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. You just gave me a shout out on my YouTube channel. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, there's this biker behind me. I'm gonna see if I can beat him up the hill. I beat the biker. Okay, so how am I gonna rate the performance of the shoe? Oh, and I'm gonna give the performance a nine out of 10. The only reason for a single point deduction is 
because there are the occasional rocks that I feel a little more abruptly than I would want underfoot. Now, a shoe does not have a rock plate, and I'm not necessarily saying that it needs one. All I'm saying is that some sharp rocks are observed underfoot. Oh, speaking of traction, see these rocks here? Sometimes these rocks are a little problematic in some shoes, especially when wet, but in the Puma uh, Voyage 3, when I'm towing off on these rocks, there is no issue whatsoever as far as grip. Um, seriously, it just, I don't know how they did it. It just grips, does such a good job. I love the outsole in this shoe. The Puma Voyage 3 has become one of the top shoes in my shoe rotation. In fact, it's gonna become my number one regular trainer shoe on the trails. So let's talk about the value. At $140 US MSRP, I think it's actually a pretty good buy. Puma probably could have gotten away with charging $150, maybe even $160 in this shoe, but I'm glad they didn't. $140 is gonna give you a lot of shoe that's gonna last a long time, that's gonna be fun to run in, inspiring you're definitely getting your money's worth so do i recommend it now you've probably gathered by now yeah i recommend the shoe i could go on and on about how much i like this shoe but it's probably time to wrap up the video and if you made it this far and you're not subscribed well what are you doing subscribe to the channel and consider joining the channel membership. Become a fan of the channel and support videos like this and other future videos, race videos, and so on. It really will help support the channel and I would appreciate it. Only a dollar a month. Click the join button down below. So let me know if you have any questions about the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. I should also mention that Puma did send me this shoe for the purpose of review, but all thoughts and opinions are strictly my own. So I guess that's it. Appreciate you being here. I will see you on the next video. And remember to be consistent, express gratitude, and enjoy every mile as I am today in the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. See you on the next one. Bye. How's it going, guys? Good job. Good job. Good job, bud. Woo -hoo. <laughs> that was so good. Ooh, yeah, that was cool. It's coming up out of the ground. Woo! Yeah, don't drink it. But sure feels good on the head. <laughs> there we have it. Yeah, 19.7 nearly, almost 20 miles. I'll take it. Woo. That was a good run. I think I need to not do now.